right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for coming today, for joining us on our Zoom. My name is Jenny Kurtz. I know it says Megan Cochran right now. I'm just signed in as Megan, but I am Jenny Kurtz, um, and I am with Girl Scouts of Southern Alabama, and I just want to thank everyone for hopping on. Um, Mary Owens from the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. She is actually, uh, Mary, you're a docent there for, um, for the museum, and she has actually been gracious enough to uh, to do all of our outdoor art badges. And so she is going to take over from me, and we are going to get started on our the Cadet Outdoor Art Badge. So, Mary? Good morning. It's great to see all these bright, happy, eager faces. The reason I picked outdoor art badges is I figured everybody was home now, and you had access either to your own backyard or maybe a nature walk close by or a public park. So I've tried to pick things that didn't have real difficult uh, materials to gather. Now there is one thing in this badge that, that you probably will not have all the materials. I, I'll tell you about that in a minute. The one we're gonna work on today, I ask you to bring uh, either plastic notebook dividers or folders. They are plastic. And the reason why is we're gonna make pinwheels like this. Uh, and you could make a pinwheel out of paper. As a matter of fact, it's a little easier to make it out of paper, but you wouldn't be able to stick it outside in your garden. I've got an herb garden outside that I'm gonna put mine in. So I wanted them to be weatherproof and that's why I picked plastic. Now, before we get started on that, let's just go over the general badge. If you notice, if you've looked over the requirements for this badge, there's five steps. And each step has different choices you can make. If you get really interested, you could do all the choices or you're supposed to do at least one. Um, the first one is explore the outdoors. And you've probably already done that in your backyard, but you maybe didn't look with explorer eyes. Eyes that, of explorers who look outside really look closely. They look at small things like you know, things you wouldn't normally think would be fun to photograph, like maybe a roly-poly or a little worm when you dig up the garden. But those are the most interesting because the patterns of insects, wings, and little, little crawly, wormy creatures are fascinating. If you zoom in when you take a photograph of them, you'll be amazed. You never want to have maybe ever wanted to get up close and personal with a with a roly-poly, but they make great photography subjects. So keep in mind that. And keep in mind, when you, if you're on the photography part, you want to pick something that you can zoom in on. That means something that won't fly away real quick. It's very hard to zoom in on a bird because they get away. But if it's something on the ground, like a a leaf petal or a flower or an insect that's not moving fast, you can get some great shots with wonderful patterns for that part of the photography thing. Um, for, that's step number four. I'm talking about photography, so I'll just tell you, it, it suggests you make a digital album for yourself or maybe go on and print your photographs and make a collage out of that. How many of you know what a collage is? Raise your hand if you do. It's a mixed media. It could be some photographs, it could be some wooden pieces, little beads, whatever you wanna do, but that would be a lot of fun for the photography. Um, another one that's really interesting that I bet you girls would be interested in is sounds of nature. It tells you you can go outside and try to recreate sounds or make a nature playlist. Make a playlist just for you that tells how you feel when you're outside. And sometimes you're gonna feel soothing and comfortable and calm. Sometimes you're gonna be revved up, especially if you see, you know, a really cool looking bird or another insect or something like that, you might have a faster playlist. So those are just some ideas. The really neat and creative one though, is do your own rap or poem, compose a rap or a poem that's inspired by nature. So those are some ideas. Now, the other one that I wanna tell you all about that I've done before, but we're not gonna do it today because it's messy and I couldn't get all this stuff in front of the camera to show you all how to do it, seed paper. 
if you all have looked over that, basically you're making your own paper. I don't know how many of you have ever done that, but it's not hard to make paper. Basically you tear up recyclable paper and you mush it together with water in a blender or a mixer. And then you press the water out of it, let it dry on a towel. And then you get seeds, generally small flat seeds and embed them in the paper. Now you can make the paper a cutout of whatever shape you want, like a heart or a bird or whatever, and send it to someone and what a great gift they're gonna get. They think they're just getting a heart maybe or a bird shape, but when they plant that seed paper, the flowers grow. So wouldn't that be a cool gift to send to your grandmother or someone who's alone or someone you'd like to cheer up with flower? Now, it gives you really good instructions on page five of your badge on how to make it. If you need a blender or a mixer, some water, some recyclable paper, some seeds, and some time, because this is in steps that it requires you to soak some things overnight and then press the water out. So they give you really good instructions on this one. I, th I hope some of you will do that and bring it next week to show us what you did. If you choose, um, how to make seed paper. The other things that they suggest you can make, and I've done this one too, is dye your own fabric. And I tell you the A number one best dye if you want red is beets. You all know what beets are, don't you? You may not like to eat them that much, but they're wonderful for dyes. And all the colors they suggest, they tell you if it's a plant dye to, to prepare your material a certain way. And if it's an artificial, uh, Let's see, what's the other one? Berry, if it's a berry, like a blueberry, blackberry, you put salt in the water and that, that helps the, the uh, color set. If it's a plant like beets or spinach or something like that, you um, just soak it in cold water. That's also very good instructions. I made a scarf one time. I got, had an old piece of white wool that had some stains on it. It was already in a scarf shape and I loved it. It was really warm in the winter, but I think I spilled something on it. I couldn't get the stain out. So I dyed it using beets and now it's this beautiful, and I didn't let it sit in there really long. It's more like a dark pink. It didn't go totally red because I didn't leave it in there quite as long. And now I have a beautiful pink wool scarf. So you can just go to town on plant dyes. The other thing they tell you you could make is out of clay. And I'm gonna send Jenny Kurtz a recipe after this is over for how to make the easiest do-it-yourself clay. You don't even have to go to the store and buy anything because all the ingredients are something you probably have at home. It's one cup of baking soda, one half cup of cornstarch and water. And then you cook it on the stove and I'll give you all the directions and it turns out great. Here's one I made after it uh, dries, it hardens and you really can't break it. Here's a disc I made. I, I cut out my white clay with a cookie cutter and then I pressed a leaf into it and got this, punched a hole in it so it can be a necklace. But you could do so many other things besides that. You could form it into the shape of a kind of a rough, rustic looking bird's nest and maybe even embed some sticks in it and paint it brown, that would be the nest part. So it'd be a cup shape. And then you could take little bitty pieces of your clay and roll them into egg shapes and you could have a bird's nest with eggs in it. Maybe the eggs where you would paint light blue with spots on them. And then the nest could have sticks embedded. That would be, I think, a really cool project. But anyway, I, what I want you all to do for next week is pick one of these. One under step two, make something. and bring it and tell us about it. Now we're gonna work on our pinwheels. So if did all of you get something that looks kind of like this, it's either a plastic uh, folder or what we need to do, the pinwheel always starts with a square. Now this thing that I got has a little tab on it and it has holes punched in the side to fit in your notebook. So what I did was cut those off. See, I've drawn lines See this line and drawn a line here to cut that off and then drawn a line to get rid of these holes. So get rid of whatever's on there that you don't want on your pinwheel. 
And then we gotta make it from a rectangle to a square. Mine happens to be eight and a half by, or eight by 11. So what you wanna do, the, the largest square you'll be able to get is eight by eight. So what I've done is subtract four inches over here and drawn a square. Can you all see that? Now, Mary, if they don't have the plastic, it is okay if they use paper, correct? Paper, and paper is actually easier, but then your pinwheel won't be able to go outside without getting all, you know, it'll fall apart. But uh, paper's great. And if you brought paper today, you'll have an easier time than I did because this, this is slippery. All right, now the next thing you do, once you've got your square, is you draw diagonal lines connecting the, t the two corners. So you draw a line from here to here, and then from here to here on your square. The next thing is you get a pair of scissors and you cut each line, but not all the way through to the middle. See where I stopped? About one inch from the middle on each cut. See that? So I've cut one, two, three, four times, but never going all the way to the middle. Stop about one inch from the middle. Now, if you have a push pin, what you wanna do, and this matters a lot more on plastic because it's, it's kinda of hard to get papers, no problem. You could just punch a hole in that with a pencil. But on the push pins, what I did was punch a hole with the push pin in the middle here, and I'd use my ruler so I wouldn't be. Here, let's, let's show you. See, I've got a ruler behind here, and I'm punching a hole in the middle. You just get that so it goes all the way through. And then you punch a hole in four of the corners. Now, which four? It doesn't matter, but you skip every other one. So I have punched a hole. Let me hold this up so you can see. I have punched a hole here in this one, then skip that one, then punched a hole here in this one, and skip that one. And then punched a hole here and skip that one. So you've got four holes you're, you, with eight, eight angles, but only four of them have a hole punch. It doesn't matter where you start, but just do one, skip the next one, do one, skip the next one, and go around, okay? Now, if you're following along with me, I'll slow down if you're trying to stay right with me. If not, you can, I guess, go back and watch this video, can't they, Jenny, afterwards? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take a, and I've got a long pin. It's a quilting pin, actually. It's about an inch and a half long, and it has a little ball on the head. See? It's about so long. It has a little ball, so it'll stay in the hole. Now, what I'm going to do is pick the first hole that I made with my push pin right here, and I'm going to put it's very hard to see it, and it's very hard for me to see it and let you all see it, so. What do you do after you cut a square? After you cut the square, you draw diagonal lines from the corners. In other words, you're making a big X with lines. You can probably do that with a pencil. I said fine line marker, but your pencil shows up on plastic, and it sure will on paper. So draw your diagonals. And then the next thing is cut all the way up to within one inch of the middle point. So you're cutting one, two, three, four lines, but not all the way through. See, I stopped before I got to the middle. Now, here's where it gets a little hard. And the only thing that's hard is you need about three hands to do this instead of one. What I'm doing is taking this pin and putting it through one of the holes, it doesn't matter which one you start with, but the hole on the, on the corners, not the hole in the middle. Okay. All right, now I've got it through one hole. So here's the head of my pen with the pen hanging down. And be careful now, if your parents are there, your mom's with you, be careful. She might wanna hold this and help you so you don't stick yourself. 
All right, now what we do, we're going to, all right, I've got this pin and I'm going to bend this over, see? I'm bending that over to the middle hole, see? Oh, there's too many hands in the way, aren't there? What it's going, what, what I'm doing is bending it so that here was my hole down here and it got bent up to there. You can't see. Here was the hole right here and it was bent from down below. So you're bending four angles up to the center point. And if you've got paper, this is real easy. If not, all right, now take the next hole and put it through the and the next one. What I'm doing is gathering all four corners that have holes in them and end up with something like this. It looks like that, but they're not attached yet. See, they haven't come through the back hole. From here, they, I've bent them and put them all on the same pin. And now I'm going through the hole in the middle. Can you repeat the steps again? Sure. You want me to start all over from yeah, the beginning? Yeah, the beginning. <laughs> okay. First of all, take your paper, whatever size it is, and make sure it's a square. So you'll probably have to cut off part of it. If yours is 8 by 11 like mine was, then you'll cut off 4 inches from the long side, right? You have like this step. Oh, it's got a little pocket. Well, yeah, can you just pull that off or cut it off probably yeah, cut the pocket. Cut it off. and you can make a smaller pinwheel out of that so don't don't get rid of that just use that for something else you can make a tiny pinwheel out of that one so now how wide is the widest part lauren of your feet you got a ruler uh yeah okay tell me how wide the widest part is It's probably like 11 or 12, isn't it? Inches. It's nine. Nine. Okay. Then that means that all the sides of your sheet have to be nine inches. Take off whatever amount you need to take off to get to nine inches on all four sides. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. We're going we're gonna to slow down and let, make sure everybody's with us a little bit. And you can always watch this um, after you're finished if you get one of the steps wrong or something. This is nothing that you can't fix. All right, I'm going back to this step where we've got four partial triangles cut all the way up toward the center hole. You want to punch a hole where those two lines, the two diagonal lines meet. Just punch it with a push pin or something. And then cut all of them with to within one inch of the middle point. So you have something that looks like this. Looks kind of like a cross. And then the idea is we're going to bend. Remember I told you to put a hole in every other one, so put a little hole here with the push pin, kind of close to the point. Hip that one, and put one here, another hole here. Skip this one, then put a little hole here next to the point. Skip that one. So you should have four holes. Every other, every other pointy angle has a hole in it. So. Punch one, skip one, punch one, skip one. Now, is everybody with me to that point? What we're gonna do is take a pin and go through. So would we put it right here, even, even though we put it right here? What is your question, where to cut it? 
And she's looking at, so, so um, you would skip every other one. So if you have it on that one end, you would skip to the, to the other side. You, you wouldn't do it on that same side as that one. Everywhere you see a point that looks like this should only have one of those points should only, only one should have a hole. So punch a hole, skip one. Punch a hole, skip one. Punch a hole, skip one. See, does that make sense? And then what you're going to do is bring all the holes on the points to the center hole you made like this. See, I've got a point on this. I've got a pin sticking through that hole and I'm bringing it to the center and sticking it down. Now see how it's been over? All right, but I want to gather all four of these. So I'm going to take everywhere there's a pin and join them everywhere there's a hole and join them together. And these holes are so little I can barely see. Oh, it looks like Patty Ann has hers. Let's see. Can you hold yours up? Yeah, she, she's spinning hers right now. <laughs> All right. See, I've got two of them up now on the pin. See, two of them are bent, and they'll be closer when I push them through the middle, but right now they're just both hanging out there on the pin. Now I'm going to go to the third one and use the pin to go through that hole. As I say, this is a lot easier with paper. You just can do it right, right quick. The plastic keeps flopping back because it's got some body to it. Now we have three up. This is the last one that hadn't been joined. So, so when we have this, we like cut to the middle? No, don't cut to, all the way to the middle. Cut about an inch away from the middle. Start on your point, your outside point, and go all the way to about a, an inch away from the middle point, okay? Tizzy, it looks like you're doing you have it? Oh, yeah, you got it. You've got it. Yeah. So what we're going to do is gather those holes that we've made on each point onto the pin. And it will look like this. I'm holding it. This is the way it'll look. My pin is right here under my thumb. If I let go to show you the pin, the whole thing is going to... All right. Now, when you're at that point, you take your pin, be careful not to stick yourself. If you've got a helper there, an adult, uh, you take the pin with all four of the points gathered on it and you punch it through the middle. And then you've got this. See that? See, here's the head of my pin. And all four of the points are, have been bent over and made this nice curve. And I have the pin sticking out the back. And it's sticking out pretty much. So be careful. Don't jab yourself with it. The reason it's sticking out is because we're going to join it. First of all, if you have a little bead or a little button, see how tiny this button is? It's real tiny and real thin. We put that on next. Or bead, a little bead would work too. Let me show you the one I used a bead on. No, that's not it. Where's my bead? I don't know. Um, we're, we're putting something between the plastic and the pen just so that the, the, the um, pencil eraser, which we're going to use in a minute, doesn't keep the thing from twirling. This, this button acts like a washer. And if you ask um, uh, your father or somebody, your mother, they'll tell you a washer keeps things from being too close to each other because when they're real close, they don't move freely. Now, the next step, here's your pencil. What you want to do, and this is where you really need some adult help so you don't stick yourself. Uh, you push that pen through the pencil eraser. I'm trying to, all right, now, you've got it. But 
you still got a pin sticking out of the back. See that? So what you need to do to protect yourself, where's my little pliers? There's a cute little, little tool that I bet you have in a toolbox outside somewhere. This is called needle nose pliers. They won't hurt you, but they, they can wrap around your pin and bend it out of the way. See the pin? I'm gonna bend that pin backwards toward the eraser so it won't hurt anybody. And that's what you need some help with from an adult probably. But here's our thing. And the thing that lets it spin fast is that little button you put in there. If the eraser were right up next to the back of it, it would kind of be too close and the pinwheel wouldn't spin as fast. Might not spin at all. Now, you can take that in the garden and it, weather won't hurt it unless the pencil rots out after a couple of years. This will be in good shape. And if you wanted, uh, once you've got this part done and you've bent the pin backwards so it won't hurt you, you could decorate the center with even more things like you might want to draw another little flower or, or glue something else on there because this is not, not going anywhere. Now that you've got the pin through the back, you see how I've got the pin coming through the eraser at the back and twist it around so it won't stick you. Um, you can do other things. You could actually even draw little lines or designs in this. Or you could draw those designs beforehand if you wanted to. But these will stick in the ground and look really cute in an outside garden. Um, and the, the package of these things that I got had six of them. So you, if you got one like that, you, you'd have a bunch of all different colors. Um, but anyway, that is the idea. And you've got one of these made for your badge requirement. The, the other things that they suggest you could do under that same, um, I think it's step five, it's, um, art powered by sun and wind. They also suggest you could get copper wire and just thread um, glass beads on it and then hang it as a sun catcher. You could make a wind sock and all that takes is a two liter plastic bottle and cut the ends off both of them. So you've got a big tube about so long and then you just uh, paste uh, or glue some plastic to it and when the wind blows it comes through the tube like a big cylinder or like a wind tunnel and de depending on the direction of the wind the little plastic streamers will, will go in a different direction who can tell me here's a hard question some of you may know there's one place where you'll always see a wind sock does anybody know what it is an airport and you know why because the planes that are taking off and landing always want to know the direction of the wind. So you'll see a big wind sock on a, on a big tall pole and pilots who are taking off or landing need to know the direction of the wind. So you'll always see a wind sock. And I think it's called sock because originally they just cut a sock, cut the ends off barn or fabric streamers out of them. But you can make this one um, from a plastic Coke bottle or something. The other thing they suggest is a sundial. So there's lots of other choices for how to have your art powered by nature. So here we're using uh, wind to make our pinwheel blow, but you could use a sundial or a sun catcher with those pretty little bees to, to show how art interacts with sunshine. So you got lots of choices um, to make and you may make one more than one or just stick with one. I wanna hear somebody's poem or rap that they do for nature. I, I'm looking forward to that. So Mary, for next week, so what um, they're, they're making one of the, uh, which, what are the steps is it that they'll, they'll make and bring to us to show? I think it's gonna be uh, number step two. Yeah, bring something that you've done from step two, which is either something made out of clay 
or dye something you can uh, wear. Remember we talked about using beets or radishes or whatever for a dye. So that has dye something you can wear, uh, make something out of clay, or make that seed paper. And all of those are not hard. The seed paper has more steps to it, and it may have um, items that you don't readily have available to you at home. Like one of the ones they say is you need a screen. You can actually do it without a screen. You could use, if your mother has an old colander that you drain vegetables in, you could use that. Um, but you do need a blender and some seeds. I don't know how many of you have seeds at home, but you could order some from somewhere, I guess, without having to leave the house. I was trying to come up with things so you could stay in your own backyard and not have to go out to a store. Oh, you're doing great. You made two of them? That, that's wonderful. I will, I will also send a list of all kinds of artists who have been inspired by nature, and some of them are so cool. I mean, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of the spiral jetty, but this one artist, he actually built this huge spiral like this in the ocean. The spiral is probably 100 yards. It's probably as big as a football field, 100 yards across, and he stacked stones in the ocean, and this was his art spiral. I'm gonna send you his name and all kinds of other artists who have been inspired by nature, and you can um, do some research on them for step two, step one of exploring art in the outdoors. Well, I hope you all have had a good time today and hope to see you next week with all your, what I'm sure are gonna be cool creations. <laughs>